Hi, hi. Welcome to the Human Design for Marketing podcast. I'm your host, Yvette Mayer, and this show is for you if you're done with cookie cutter marketing and ready to build your personal brand in alignment with who you really are. Let's dive in. Hi, hi. I'm Yvette Mayer, and this is the Human Design for Marketing podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome back. If you are a regular listener, I so appreciate you being here. And if you're new around here, well, it's very, very exciting to have you in my world and me in your ears. Now, this episode is going to be a bit different. We are usually very focused on the fusion of human design and marketing, which I love, I absolutely love, and but... On the odd occasion, I do come in with an episode that is more pure marketing focused, and this is going to be one of those. Of course, there will be human design sprinkled throughout because I live my life uh, very much filtered through the lens of my own design, and that will come through. However, I thought it was time, it was really time for me to speak into A few things that come up for me when I am just navigating through the, let's let's say the world of social media and seeing clients I've worked with in the past or others, peers, even competitors. In my head, I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say about marketing and what not to do in particular. And I noticed this happening. I I find myself thinking, oh no, I wish they wouldn't do that because it's in some way or other causing less effectiveness. And that's what drives me. I want to see you all succeeding. And I know that I am in a very unique position not alone, but it's a unique position in that I've had so much experience in the marketing and advertising world. If you're if you are new around here, more than 30 years, yes, I am a seasoned campaigner. And so I I like live and breathe this stuff. It it's just so innate in me. And therefore things that are really obvious to me as I don't do that, uh, that I think are re- should be obvious to everybody else. They're just not because majority of you have not come from a marketing or advertising or even communications background and you have a gift and skills and a passion that you're monetizing with a business that you are marketing online. And you have to figure it all out for yourself. And yes, you learn so much by self-study and working with mentors and coaches, but for the most part, it's all new and it's a really steep learning curve. And so I'm aware that some of the things that I find so obvious and generator style frustrating are not obvious to you. So today, this in this episode, I'm going to share with you the top five things that I observe that I'm like, I wish you would not do that. And I, my goal for this is to be a bright, shiny, let's call myself a reflector today, to reflect back at you that you're doing amazing. You're doing amazing. And you can do even better when you stop doing these five things, okay? Are you ready? Strap in for my five things. The first thing is, and this is even for the many gens out there, I want you to stop being so impatient whilst you're marketing and expecting results. It is not an instant gratification game. Marketing is a long, long, long process. We need to build relationships with new people coming in at all times. And these relationships, well, 
it differs in terms of the amount of time, but there's always a journey for everybody that comes into your energy. There is a journey that leads them from not being aware of who you are to being somewhat aware. Maybe they've been reached by you, they've seen you, and then, you know, over time they become a follower. Then they move into a place where they're more, more engaged potentially and that can be a really long process of building that engagement which leads to consideration before they're ready to purchase. And even in the engagement phase, there's a long period before they are going to start doing more than liking a post uh, and I'm talking about actually commenting or sharing or jumping into your stories of like all those things like this is this takes time and what I observe is this changing of tactic and that can be changing of the whole niche or positioning uh it could just be uh giving up on a launch or something like that really quickly because of a strong desire for instant gratification. I am here to lovingly tell you that this is causing you to stall and even go backwards when you're not persisting, when you're not patient, when you're continually being reactive and thinking things aren't working and therefore maybe even going quiet or changing up what you're doing and you're losing the equity that you will build by being consistent. So what I suggest is rather than being impatient is to really work hard on the clarity of your positioning in market. This is the really important piece. Like know who you are, who you're for, what you do to help them and how you connect with others from a messaging point of view. Get really clear on that. Don't just throw spaghetti on a wall. And once you lock in on that, I want you to lock in for a long period of time, for months and months, preferably longer, but not for a week or two weeks. And then you give up on it because nobody's listening, nobody's seeing or hearing or engaging or buying. It just doesn't work like that, my friend. It's a long, long game. And you know, by way of example, when I pivoted my business to human design for marketing, so I'd been a business coach for years before that, and I'd been primarily focusing on helping women create digital products, which is something I still love, by the way. And going into human design for marketing was, was a huge reposition. And I knew because of my experience that it wasn't going to be something that I could announce and attract the right people into from a, from a perspective of new offers and things like that overnight. So I built a plan that was for a whole year, a whole year where it would be about profile and positioning and less focus on selling whilst I built equity in this specialty, in this new niche that I had decided to really hone in on. And I, I was selling readings in the beginning, which were fairly low ticket. They were much lower priced than I sell those for now. And I did have a, a legacy product at the time, which was my Momentum Mastermind. Hi to any of the women that were in that with me because I did that. I ran that mastermind for a few years. So I, I did have consistent recurring revenue coming in. So I was a little protected. But outside of that, I put all of my focus and attention on building my profile. And that meant coming up with continual, fresh, content and perspectives that wasn't just about building my profile. It was a body of work. It was a perspective. And there was no part of me that thought that that was going to be quick. Like it, it took me five months until I was ready to actually sell a product, which was the frequency project, but five months of just working on profile and building my credibility. 
that's the norm, my friends. And here I sit nearly two years later, and I am absolutely synonymous with human design for marketing. I, I don't think there's anybody that is confused about that. So that is what is happening now, but it's been a long road and I have felt that it has been slow at times. And now I, I get to reap the rewards. Now things are accelerating at speed. So, you know, that's how long it's taken. I was just, I just sent a message to Sidra on my team saying, I got an alert from Google yesterday that we've had 3000 clicks to the website uh, in the last 30 days, which is 1000 more than the 30 days prior. So another third again. And, you know, this is because of this consistent focus and the, the rate at which that is growing, the foundations are really strong. And that's what I want for you as well. So that is number one, being impatient. Number two, completely different topic, is falling into the trap. I want you to stop falling into the trap of sticking to random BS rules. Now, this came to mind for me and I uh, recorded a video for Instagram on this very topic this week because I have been guilty of this as well. And I'm going to give you my own example, but there's so many rules out there. It's like how you should launch, how you shouldn't launch, whether you should niche, whether you shouldn't have a niche and so on and so on and so on. And so what I want to say to you is there's no one way to do marketing. There is no guaranteed formula. There is absolutely no proven uh, approach that is going to work for everyone. And that's why you're here because you get this. You know that we are all designed differently, that our energy works differently. And also that anything that marketers are saying out there, well, nine times out of 10, it's not fact, it's perspective including what I say, okay? So just take it with a grain of salt and really trust yourself and your own instincts first and foremost. So my example on this was I, and you may have, if, you, if you're following me on Instagram, you may already know this story, but I'll repeat it. I was looking at the Frequency Project sales page uh, coming up to doing a big uh, Frequency Project promotion, which has all been happening over the last couple of weeks. And I noticed that the lead in on the sales page was coming from a problem or a pain point kind of message. It was talking about the fact that your lack of clarity, I've kind of talked about this today as well, but your lack of clarity is costing you. Like if you're not clear on where you're going, what your vision is, what your business stands for, your positioning, all the things I just spoke about, then it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you energy and it is going to cost you money. And this was the lead in on the Frequency Project sales page. And I went back to review the messaging and I was like, oh, I don't do pain point messaging. I always do desire state messaging and I'm going to rewrite this. So I, I did. I was like, I want to I flip this and I want to get back to really focusing on what my ideal clients are desiring that the program delivers. So I shifted it towards attracting more clients. Now, both of these things are true because they've come back at me from the many, many humans that have gone through the Frequency Project in feedback forms, in results, in outcomes. It is both a place to go to, to gain incredible clarity and to start attracting more clients. I didn't feel like I wanted to go as far as saying the frequency project equals you will attract more clients whilst that is consistent feedback. So I went for a stepping stone, which is the frequency project will help you elevate your own magnetism, which will attract more clients. Because I know that people come into that, into this container at different stages in their business. And so not everybody is going to get the same results. And I don't like to overpromise. So I did that. And then I started to really process what I'd done. And I'm like, is it true? Is it factual that as a spiritual, more feminine style business owner, that we should avoid talking about pain in our marketing. And the fact is, no, it's not true. It's a perspective. And also, as far as human design goes and understanding how energy works, we are drawn towards other people's pain and their journey through their shadows and their challenges to realizing what we want. 
So actually, when I'm working inside the frequency project and in other coaching containers, we look at where uh, where is your pain? Like wh where in your chart can you see the a low frequency or the shadow state that you've experienced, that you've healed, that because we know that that is very magnetic to our ideal clients that have a similar challenge. So the big way that Ra taught this was through the centers and our open centers being where we sell from. And we do have episodes on this topic specifically, which we'll link you to in the show notes. But it's the same thing when we're talking about what are our, what is our ideal audience struggling with? Well, they're likely struggling with the same things that we've struggled with, that we've grown through, that we now have a perspective and lived experience on how to overcome that thing. And so basically human design teaches us to focus on pain point marketing in a shortcut kind of a way. Although, although to be fair, it's not the same as bro marketing as in, using tactics like really doubling down on you are in this problem, this is why you feel like this, you're failing, you, all that. It's not that. It, it's actually using our own stories to be relatable and credible in the way that we build our marketing out. So number two is don't follow the rules, but I've also given you some insight into uh, a thing that, you know, you maybe have taken on like I had around pain point marketing and only pushing towards desire. And oh my God, now that I'm talking about this, I was messaging with my amazing project, a private client today, and she watched my video on this very topic. And she said, you know what? She said, it's actually just as bad when people that are in similar fields to, to me as a business coach are almost like toxic positivity, like they only talk about all the amazingness and they focus on their results and the money they've made and they don't share the pain and they don't spend enough time connecting through where they've been and what that felt like and normalizing the whole journey. So yeah, there's that as well. Okay. Number three is human design related. And this one is using whether something feels aligned or not as a reason not to show up and market your business, as a reason to go and hide away. I know I've spoken about this before because it's something that really, uh, really affects my work is when I work with people who are like, oh, I'm just not, I'm just going to like not actually do any marketing for a little bit because it doesn't feel aligned right now. And my opinion, and this is a bit of tough love, is this isn't a hobby. This is your business. This is your livelihood. And you're in the business of helping people when you use alignment as a reason for not showing up, then you're self-sabotaging. And it's sabotaging others because they don't get to find out about you at the same time. And that, that's a bit of a, a sad state of affairs. Also, let's be clear that business doesn't mean we get to be in alignment all day, every day. Business is hard, especially small business. Growing a business online is a challenging thing to do. There are going to be times when you have to suck it up, princess, and do things that don't make you feel comfortable. Over the course of your business, you want to be continually optimizing what you're doing to get closer and closer to what is aligned for you. But you are not always going to have that privilege, my friend. In the beginning, you are going to have to build strong foundations and do things that are not comfortable. And that is going to make you want to disappear and it won't feel aligned all the time. Here's my story on this one. And it's great to be telling this story now. I haven't, I don't think I've, I've been very open about this, but I'm going to bring it now. I, as you may know, have a YouTube channel and I've had this YouTube channel for just coming up to a year with the primary content being a new 
transits video of the human design transits going through every single gate. There's 64 gates and a new episode every six days. Now, when I took on this project, I was very excited and I invested a boatload of money, the most I have ever by far spent on anything in my business. I've never even spent this much on like a high ticket full year mastermind. I've never spent this before. Biggest investment of my business journey. And I had a very strong reason for doing it. And it was around my strategy, my long-term strategy of building my profile, my credibility and being found, making it easy to find me as the destination if you're interested in human design for marketing. So I set out on this adventure, <laughs> let's call it an adventure, and within a few months, I started to hate it. Not hate the content, I love the content, I love the transits, I love how much I've grown in this process, but the amount of time spent planning, being on camera, coordinating different camera angles, and then having to, like, there's a lot of steps in me doing this. And for the first six months, there was times when I wanted to quit so hard. Like, I'm like, this is draining me. I'm a generator. This is out of alignment because I'm meant to fill it up. But it's actually a blessing in some ways that I'd invested so much financially into this because I was not willing to completely screw up that investment. And I would have because you don't you don't invest into a series of 64 gates and then get halfway and stop without losing something in the process. And what you lose is a body an entire body of work. Now this honestly this this there's so many blessings in this. Like I'm so glad that I kept going. But I will say I had people, many actually say to me along the way, you should stop. Like, this is like, no, this is, this is really screwing with your energy. You're exhausted. No, 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 just pull out. Like it's only money. You'll figure it out. And there was just a part of me. And I want to say my sacral was, was always like, no, I'm not stopping. No, no, no. I am going to see this through. I know it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. And so what I did was I got more support from my team in terms of them taking over more of the steps because I there was a stage there where I was doing a lot of the steps myself. I do have an editor, always have had an editor, but there's a lot of other things. There's show notes, there's um, the thumbnail, uh, there's the getting different assets to the ed editor, like different uh, grabs of video content to splice. In. Like there's so much involved in this. And I am now, right now, in a position where I have shot 62 gates and I do every week I record two new episodes. And so tomorrow I am going to have finished. I mean, there'll still be the production side, but my actual time in studio will finish tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God. So as you can hear from me, this has been challenging and I could have stopped and I could have said it didn't feel aligned and it wasn't aligned and, and you know, I've learned so much about myself and what I want to do in my business as a result of this. I even learned that I don't want a big YouTube channel, which I thought I might in the beginning, that what is important to me is that the whole 64 gates are a series that I can market that I can use to uh, integrate into my website that can be part of what I deliver to clients uh, that make me more of a destination because the videos are all being surfaced in Google search as well. And it's part of why our, our website traffic is growing. So the, the long term, the foundations that I was speaking about earlier are definitely being built. And I'm telling you this for a reason, because you need to know that there's a lot of effort behind the scenes that you, you are not realizing. Like you might be experiencing, wow, well, look at this. If it makes this look easy, there's a new episode out every six days. It's all good. I want to do that. Uh, I'm here to tell you the truth. And that is that business can be hard. And sometimes we have to suck it up regardless of something feeling like it's out of alignment.
Okay. Number four, this one's a really simple one, but it's something that I see so much, so much. And that is, and it's, it's pertaining to video marketing, but I can relate it back to other marketing as well. And it's not respecting the attention span of a gnat that our audience have. Now, you will know what a hook is. And I haven't called a hook a hook the whole time I've been uh, a business owner. I've always spoken about the fact that you have to start with something strong. You have to make strong point of view, disrupt. It can be shocking. It can be funny. But you have to start any type of content, written or video content, strong because we lose people within the first second. First second, they're going to keep scrolling. Email's the same. Like, we have to start strong. Video in particular, I get so upset when I see people either going live or loading up video where there is this space in the beginning for them to say, hi, just thought I'd jump on and have a chat to you. I'm such and such. And I'm like, no. No, 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 you need to grab my attention and that is not how you do that scroll. So many people do this and I don't want you to be one of them. You'll notice that whenever I share video content and if you're you're not a follower of mine on Instagram, go over to Instagram and just go back and have a look at any face to camera video that I will go straight into the topic. No faff no introducing myself. It's like, this one's for you, if, or yesterday this happened. It's always straight into the middle of the drama. This is true when you're writing an email too. You don't want to say, let me tell you a story about what happened to me last week. No, you want to go straight into, you won't believe what she said to me. That's the kind of marketing and way of communicating that is going to captivate your audience and make sure that they're actually engaging with you. We really want that. Okay. All right. Number five, number five is I want you to stop thinking that everything you do needs to be new and original. Oh my God. Firstly, our audience see such a small amount of what we publish. Did you know that only 4% of your social media audience is going to see any one post? And here you are spending so much time and effort making your content sound, look, feel amazing. And very few people in your audience are actually having the benefit of seeing it. The best thing you can possibly do is be repetitive. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but be repetitive. Now, one way of doing this is to, when you're creating anything, to make sure that you're always considering how and where else can I use this? So if you're in my world, you might notice that a lot of my Instagram content, if you see it, because only 4% of you do, becomes a main theme within my email marketing as well. And it can go the other way as well, but because I um, share the most on Instagram, it tends to start there and then make its way elsewhere. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Next up, because I know this to be true, I also regularly repost the exact same content. It might be the same caption, with a different reel, or it can even be a reel that I've published months ago that did really well, then I'm like, you know what, let's give that one a try again, because it it went well last time. And I know that only a small percentage of my audience see any particular post. So make sure that you're not constantly creating, that you're breathing life into your wisdom, that you're making everything you do as, as, good as it can possibly be. And then you're spreading that into as many places as you can and doing it more than once. The other thing on this topic is sometimes you're going to create something that is fire, that you're like, this is so good. 
Like, this is going to go off. Everyone's going to love this piece of content. And then nothing happens. It's like crickets. Rather than just feel despondent, I want you to, in that situation, review it and think, how could I have done this a little differently and better? And use it again, the same content, but in a different format. Take it into a different channel or just create a different hook. Like don't don't let it go. You know when your content is really strong and when it feels like a F yes from you, then give it a chance to breathe. Give it more chance to fly and do its magic out in the world. So that is your five. I'm going to give you a bonus one because I think we all need to hear this all the time. Stop watering down your brilliance, your strong points of view. No hiding out because you're afraid your family or someone that has an opinion of you, someone you went to school with, your mum, is going to think, what is she doing? She's too egotistical. She's made, like, whatever it is, stop watering yourself down. We want you to express yourself at your fullest and finest. Be your most authentic and brilliant self. That is what is going to capture attention. That is what is going to magnetize the right clients towards you who are like, yes, this human or this business is for me. I want to buy from her or him. It's all about you owning your absolute magic. So number six, bonus bonus points, do not water down your incredibleness. You are so worthy of all of the success that you desire. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. As I said, a little bit different. Make sure you come and have a chat with me over on Instagram in the direct message anytime for ways of working with me. There's always details of how to do that in the show notes. I hope to be back in your ears again sometime now, sometime now, sometime soon. Bye for now. There are heaps more resources in the show notes. I can't wait to be back in your ears again soon. Bye for now.